Impulse dashboards provide a powerful and flexible way to visualize the performance data that Impulse captures. In this video, we'll discuss creating dashboards, modifying dashboard settings, sharing dashboards, and setting up your default dashboards. Let's get started. You can see the list of available dashboards by going to Central and Dashboards. This displays a list of all the dashboards in your tenant. You can sort this list by clicking on the column headings. Another way to view your dashboards is in the library view. So again, central library. And this provides a list by folder and allows you to create folders to organize your dashboards by team, by author, by functional use, however you want to organize your dashboards. There are many great system dashboards that are included with Impulse Enterprise. You can visit the documentation on learn.akamai.com for a complete list and description of these system dashboards. When it comes to creating dashboards, it's often useful to use these system dashboards as a starting point. There are a couple ways we can do this. First, if we right click on a dashboard name, we can select duplicate. That'll create a copy of the system dashboard that you can edit or you can edit any system dashboard or any widget on the dashboard, and this will force you to make a copy of the dashboard that you can then edit. It's also possible to create new dashboards from scratch. Dashboards are made up of widgets that combine to provide a visual representation of impulse data. Widgets are organized into logical folders. Click the toggle widget selection panel icon to expose the widget folder layout. Folders exist for various types of charts, histograms, tables, and other data types. It's definitely worth your time to familiarize yourself with the types of widgets available in these folders. To create a new dashboard, click Central, select Dashboards. Now click the plus sign in the upper left to open the new dashboard setup dialog. Give the dashboard a name, and then specify where you want the dashboard to be stored. Again, you can create directory structures that fit your needs, whether it's by owner, by functional type, or whatever works for your organization. Next, we select the widget layout. Note the various combinations of columns and rows that will form the initial layout of your new dashboard. And click Next. From the list, select the widget type. For example, let's open up the Charts folder. Next, select a type of chart. In this example, let's look at the measurements that are available. Then select the measurement type. Uh, let's look at the largest contentful paint, one of the new Core Web Vital measurements. And if you'd like to see data for a specific attribute by rank, for example, the top five browsers or top five page groups that contain largest contentful paint, select the show top checkbox and select that dimension. So in our case, let's show the top five page groups for largest contentful paint. Then drag the widget into the widget drop area on your dashboard. Give it a few seconds to populate. And there you have it. You can hover over any data point to see more detail. Continue to drag widgets in the same way into the widget drop area of the dashboard to create the exact dashboard that meets your needs. Now let's look at how to edit an existing dashboard. On the menu bar, click the toggle dashboard edit mode icon to open the editing panel. Dashboard settings are presented in a hierarchical manner on the lower left. The dashboard level shows settings that apply to the entire dashboard. The widget level is for settings that apply to the currently selected widget. Click Dashboard to view the dashboard settings. The General tab allows you to change the name, display, location, and even set a default dashboard. The Layout tab allows you to change the column layout. The Properties tab allows you to change the color and other visual aspects of the dashboard. And the Filter tab allows you to set custom filters that apply to the dashboard. This is a very powerful capability because it allows you to assign specific filters that you can use to segment your user data. Click Widget to view the settings for the currently selected widget. The General tab again allows you to change the title and display attributes of the widget. And the Filter tab allows you to add custom filters or dimensions that apply only to the current widget. Depending on the type of widget, there may also be some additional settings. In this case, we've got Select Measurements Over Time, which allows us to change the chart type from a bar to a line. 
as well as settings for X and Y axis. Another way to create dashboards is to copy widgets that you like from existing dashboards and apply them to your new dashboard. To do this, click on the title bar of the widget you want to copy. Then click the Copy Widget icon on the toolbar. Next, go to your new dashboard and click the Paste Widget icon. The new widget will be pasted below the currently selected widget. Let's talk about container dashboards. Containers are powerful tools used to nest a dashboard inside your custom dashboard. The nested container can have a separate time range or other filters from the main dashboard. Let's look at an example of a container dashboard in this comparison dashboard. The left container, named before, has a filter date of June 7 that applies to each widget within that container. The right container, named after, has a filter date of June 14, which also applies to all the widgets within that container. To create a container dashboard, either create a new dashboard or open an existing dashboard. Click the toggle widget selection panel icon to open the folder panel. Click container and drag the dashboard container widget into your dashboard. In the new or existing dashboard dialog, select either a new dashboard or choose an existing dashboard. In the case of our comparison dashboard, both before and after were existing dashboards that we brought in using the existing dashboard dialog. Well, now that we've created these wonderful dashboards, I'm sure you'll want to share them with members of your team. Dashboard can be shared with others, whether or not they're users of Impulse. To do so, open the dashboard and click on the Share Dashboard icon. Select an option, then click OK. The private link option creates a URL that requires authentication in order to use. So the user must be an Impulse user. The public link, however, does not require a login. Impulse adds read-only authentication to the URL, allowing others to view the dashboard. You can also see dashboard that others in your tenant are sharing by clicking on the View Existing Shared URLs link. Impulse provides the ability to select the dashboards that you want open each time you log into Impulse. To do this, let's go to Central, and in the left pane, you'll see Settings and then My Settings. And under Dashboards, we'll select one of the options. Open No Dashboards, self-explanatory. Open Dashboards from the previous session. Or Open Default Dashboards. Okay, so only the dashboards in this default list will appear when you open Impulse. To set your default dashboard, select a dashboard from the dropdown and click the plus sign and repeat this process for every dashboard that you want to have open every time you open Impulse. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this brief tour of Impulse dashboards. Have fun creating dashboards that meet the needs of your organization. And feel free to reach out to us if you'd like to see more videos on a specific topic. Bye for now.